Oh my god, we finally are witnessing Naganadel with its intimidating figure and its violent scream. <coughs> Wait, that's the actual sound it makes? Let me listen to this one more time. <coughs> and now you guys know how I sound every time I'm trying to get off my bed. You're welcome. Pokemon Ranger, I choose you! What's up my dear boys and girls, it's your Ranger here and welcome to another of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. Today we are screeching and crawling into this adventure with episode 89, The Prism of Light and Darkness. Its name is Necrozma. And besides the scream which shatters all of my bones into little pieces, how was the rest? If you want more, then grab some popcorn, grab some cookies and let's do this. So we continue where we left off with Lunala regaining its energy, which by the way will never be explained throughout the whole episode ever again. Damn it Sun and Moon! Lily then is like, it wants to save Sogaleo. And of course Ash's answer, then we are going to save him too. To but then Lusamine intervenes and is strictly against the idea. Kinda weird coming from the same person who not only got saved in the same way as well, but also constantly sends out the same kids to dangerous Ultra Beast missions. Oh, you hypocritical sexy woman. But in the end, she had to let them go anyway. So while Team Rocket is plotting to catch Lunala to improve their image towards Giovanni, Lusamine actually intended to go too. But then Faba intervenes while saying things like, I'll go with Kukui and by the way, Kukui, I'll be the leader of the team. Oh damn, we have a certified badass here. In what kind of world are we living right now where Faba is a badass? Fuck you, Faba, for letting us believe you're cool. But the badassery doesn't stop there, because right after the Guardians have entered the wormhole, thanks to Lunala, the elite team of Giovanni, aka the Matori Matrix, are soon to follow. But then, kaboom! Kukui's bravery and Faba's hypno and Alakazam are taking down the fake Team Rockets easily. Hm. Amateurs. Arriving at the other side of the wormhole, the gang suddenly gets attacked by numerous poipols who are trying to defend their nest by shooting their splooge all over the kids. Uh, at least it's really well animated? Masaki Wane is my god. But after some pep talk by Ash's poipol, the other poipols stop the assault and soon the big mama appears with the most intimidating scream a Pokemon has ever delivered. <laughs> But maybe I'm a little bit too harsh because Naganadel seems to be very exhausted. And everybody quickly tries to help her. Everybody besides Edgelord Gladion, of course, who's like, But we have to follow Lunala! We don't have time for this! Edge! After healing the giant Pokemon, Naganadel then uh, starts talking via telepathy. You know what guys, I'm not surprised at all since we had Pokemon like Mewtwo and Zygarde talking like that as well. As long as you don't start actually talking like Pikachu in the I Choose You movie, I'm okay with that. The first thing Naganadel says is that she wants the Guardians to leave Necrozma alone. Stunned by that request, the gang asks why and Poipol's mama explains everything via illusions. That UB Black is actually called Necrozma and that he is the Radiant One, Ooh, who actually knew that, and that he provided light to prosper this world, just like he did with Alola. But then a meteor came out of nowhere and threatened to destroy this world. Necrozma protected them, which in the end cost him all of his light and his energy. And while the other Poipols and their mom had to survive with the little remaining light they had, Ash's Poipol one day just decided to go out on his own. And the rest is history with Necrozma later chasing after the legendaries, as we have seen in the past episode. So what should our heroes do? Save Sogaleo, or let Necrozma absorb Nebby's light so that Poipol Pulse world can prosper once again. If it was for Gladion, he would definitely save Sorgaleo because without Sorgaleo Lunala, Alola would fall into darkness. Ash's answer? We do both. By having the whole Manalo and Alola spirit in mind, which means shooting, I, I mean sharing, their Z power with Necrozma so that he doesn't need Nebby anymore. But in the real world, Kukui and the badass Faba are fighting against Team Rocket member Gozu, who pulls out a beautifully animated Mega Agron and one shots both with Heavy Slam. Now that's what I call elite. The rest can be summed up like this. The real Team Rocket decides to, uh, you know, just wait until the crew is back so that they can capture them while being so excited that James turns Super Saiyan. Professor Burnett, meanwhile, discovers that Necrozma can regain his light by basically doing it like a spirit bomb with the whole energy sharing concept from all the people around the world. And the episode ends with Ash and the other Z-Ring users sharing their light with Necrozma. So that's the end of the episode and without any more hesitation, ratings. What can you say about the story? I can't really say much about the story since it's just more backstory and deepening the lore, which I'm totally okay with. I'd rather have an episode which explains things in more detail instead of brushing everything aside for the sake of plot 
convenience. Ahem, <coughs> episode 52 is still terrible. But while I'm totally fine with that, in my opinion nothing which was revealed in this episode really stood out. I mean they revealed on numerous occasions that Yubi Black indeed is the Radiant One. And the whole energy sharing concept surrounding Necrozma, even though it fits really well with the whole Manalo and Alola motto, it's nothing really special. Like I mentioned before, it's basically the Goku Spirit Bomb concept. At least Team Rocket this time impressed much more thanks to the Mega Evolution one shot. But in my opinion it's kinda sad to see that they seemingly won't have any major influence to Necrozma or the Ultra Guardians. They feel more like an inconvenience rather than a threat. Just compare this Team Rocket with the Mellow Attack and how Giovanni was involved in the storyline. It's night and day. But all in all, an okay episode, 6 out of 10. What can I say about the focus? The Prism of Light and Darkness. Its name is Necrozma. And with that title it's clear that this episode was all about discovering Necrozma's backstory and concept. Once again, because the whole concept of Necrozma in my opinion isn't really that unique and because the details they revealed in regards of the Black One weren't really that mind blowing, which basically was just them repeating the children's tale that Lily told them in last week's episode, it ended up very underwhelming. 6 out of 10. Last but not least animation. Animation was freaking amazing. You could tell throughout the whole episode that there were parts which were animated by a totally different person. That person is of course Masaki Iwane, who in the past animated numerous Pokemon highlights including a good chunk of the Greninja vs Abomb Snow battle and even parts of the Ash vs Alan battle. And my favorite Iwane animation in this episode was definitely the one with the gang dodging the Poipol attacks. And of course, Mega Agron. God, that was epic, but so short because it was a one shot. But I'm still really happy, 10 out of 10. So this episode scores a 7.33 out of 10, with the recommendation to watch it, because this episode digs deeper into the lore of Necrozma, while also providing some good animation highlights. But just don't expect too much from Necrozma's oral story. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this review, and just like always, i see you guys in the comments down below. Bye guys!